Good day everyone. I am Joseph of Digilytic Solutions. I am a consultant, trainer, speaker, and a book author. So welcome to our course, Mastering Machine Learning Algorithm. So in this lesson, we will learn about mapping independent events in Python. So at the end of this session, you are expected to identify independent events, map out independent events using Python, and appreciate the concept of independent events in understanding machine learning algorithms. So before we go further, it's, let's review what we had in our first session. So we learned about what a random variable is and its properties. We learned that knowing the concept of a random variable, it is not enough because it does not provide more meaningful description of a certain event. So we learned that the right way to do this is to provide a measurable function of different values. So if you missed the first lesson, the link is given below. So in this lesson, we will consider tossing a die. So but instead of one, we're going to have two. So our assumption is that each throw is independent. So it means to say that the first throw is an in independent event, and so is the second, and so on and so forth. So at this point, maybe you would like to ask me, what is an independent event then? So independent event means that the outcome of one does not affect or influence the others. So still remember our lesson, the first lesson? So we learned that a fair die has six possible outcomes. So we have here, it has six possible outcomes. So when you throw a die and the result is two, for example, it's two, it has nothing to do with the result when you throw the die again. It means to say that the next result will still have a measurable value of one six. So no note that one is different, two is different, three is different, four is different, and so five and six are, are different. So in real life situation, for example, just to illustrate an in independent event, your drinking of coffee has nothing to do with your enrolling in an online course. So why? It's because both are independent events. So now, let's consider two dice. So we have the first die, then we have here the second die. So what do you think is the total outcomes if we're going to throw the two dice together. So maybe you would want to tell me that it, it's 12. So is it really 12? Because each of them has six possible outcomes because you have just counted or you have just counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So well, maybe th that is your answer. So the answer is it's not actually 12 but it is 36. Maybe right now you are thinking, why 36? So let's have this one. So this represents the outcome or the outcomes. So this table is called Cartesian product. Let me write here. Okay, Cartesian product. Okay, so it's, it's what we call Cartesian product. because it shows the product of the elements say for example we have the element x and y in an ordered way so we said that it shows the ordered relationship of x and y so fix for example this is our x and then this part is our y so as you could see we could see the pattern here so the x is paired with y so we have 1 and 1 then 1 and then 2 for y again 1 for x then we paired that 3 for y and so on and so forth until we are done with the last pair which is 6 for x and then 6 for y so this shows us the total possible outcomes which are 36 so each outcome is, is independent of the other so again it's independent because this one has nothing to do with this 
So if this one occurs, 1 and 1, when we throw the two dice all together, then it has nothing to do with 1 and 2. So it means that the chance of happening 1 and 2 will still be the same. So then, because we have these 36 possible outcomes, we could say that the total set of the possible out outcomes are 1 and 1, the, pa the, the pair of 1 and 2, the pair of 1 and 3, the pair of 1 and 4, the pair of 1 and 5, the pair of 1 and 6, and so on and so forth until the pair of 6 and 6. So now, what's the measure of its set? So le let's keep in mind that the events are independent. Okay, the measure of each set, okay, the each set is the respective measure of each element. So let's take this as an example. Okay, so we have the probability mass function of the pair 1 and 2, which is equal to the product of the probability measure of the set 1 and the set 2. So, so rem remember that this one, this set, has a probability measure of 1 over 6 and also the set. So that means when we throw two dice and then when 1 and 2 comes out, or I mean come out, then their probability measure is 1 over 36. So this is just very easy. We're just going to multiply 1 over 6 times 1 over 6. So maybe you would ask me, where is this 1 over 6 come from? It's very easy, right? Remember that in th throwing a die, we have 6 possible outcomes. So this is for the first die. First die. And also for the second die, we have six possible outcomes. So remember that in each outcome, the possibility is one over six, and also the possibility for this one is one over six. So we multiply them, then it becomes one over 36. So for the two dice, if we are going to throw them together, the possibility of having the pair one and two is one over 36. So that's it. So we have already established the rules. So let's make things more interesting. So for example, we have this problem. What is the probability that the sum of the die is equal to 8? So it means to say that we, when we're going to throw the two dice, then what could be the possibility that the numbers that would appear for both the first and the second die would have a sum of 8? So that's a very interesting problem. So, to do this, we're going to use the Python. So the first step is to describe the measurable function. So our measurable function is x is defined as the domain of the pairs of a and b and the codomain of a plus b. So we can also say this way, from the point of the pairs of a and b to the point of the sum of a and b. So that is our first step. So A and B here represent the sets of two dice. So A plus B is the sum of the pairs of the two sets. Then let's go to our step number two, of course, so we could be able to process the data. We're going to import the necessary library and packages. So we're going to import the NumPy as PD then import our collections and of, of course we're going to also import the default dict from the collection so we would be able to make our list later on so our third step is to connect all of the pairs with their sum so this is actually the Cartesian product so still remember our Cartesian product just a while ago so I here, this one, I here means the first set and J is the second set. So as you can see, the sum of 1 plus 1 is 2 and so on. So when we are going to print this code, we could get this one. So 
Oops. Let me go back. Oops. Where is it? Okay. Here we go. So the the pairs the pair one and one is two. The pair one and two is three. The pair one and three is four, and so on and so forth, until we reach the pairs six and six. Okay. So that is our third step. Now. Let's go to our fourth step. The fourth step is to gather all of the pairs, A and B pairs, that sum to each of the possible values from 2 to 12. So maybe you would like to ask me, why do we begin with 2 and not with 1? So does that make sense? So rem remember that the lowest number in our die is 1. So it is impossible to get a combination of 1 and 0, or even 0, 0, or even 0 and 0. Why? It is because the lowest number that we have in our die is 1. So we could never get 1 and 0 or 0 and 0. So of course the lowest possible combinations or combination could be 1 and 1 and the sum of 1 and 1 is 2. So this is why the combination starts with 1 and 1 whose sum is 2. So 2 is also the lowest sum. So here we create a list of values that correspond to the sum starting with the lowest and then we append and then we append all the succeeding values and their cor and their correspond corresponding sums so of course we start with 1 plus 1 which is 2 so start 2 is defined as the sum of 1 and 1 and going to 12 which is defined as the sum of 6 and 6 so this is easier so we can actually make it clear clearer and less twinning to our eyes just by pulling out the pairs that correspond to a certain sum so if you're going to just have this one it's somewhat very tiring to our eyes it's because we really have to pivot our eyes from this part going to this part just looking for the kind of sum that we are looking for so in a way so for for the pairs or for the pair having the sum of 2 is 1 and 1 so what about if we're going to look for the pairs having the sum of 7 so here is 7 so it's the pairs 1 and 6 2 and 5 3 and 4 4 and 3 5 and 2 and 6 and 1 so each of this set has the sum of 7 so So these sums are anchored on the independence of the outcome of the indiv individual item in, in Denvi. So rem remember Denvi here uh, has all the, the combinations of the numbers having the sums from 2 to 12. Now we would like to make our life easier just by slicing that sum that correspond to the number that we are looking for so for example if you're going to look for the set having the sum 2 we're going to do like this print din v then 2 so we have here 1 and 1 and then if we would like to have 3 then just do like this then we have 2 pairs for a 4 we have 1 to 3 pairs for the sum of 5 we have 1 2 3 4 pairs for 6 so we have 1 2 3 4 5 so we have 5 pairs and for 7 and then 4 8 now our problem is that we're going to identify the measure of the items whose sum is 8 so this is our problem so we know that each outcome has the same probability measure which is 1 over 36 so remember that the pairs that have the sum 8 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, we have 5 pairs having the sum 8. So we have 2 and 6, 3 and 5, we have 4 and 4, 5 and 3, 6 and 2. Okay, so now we're going to show the measure of each one. So remember that each one of them or each pair has the probability measure or has a probab probability measure of 1 over 36 so if you're going to look for the 
probability measure of those combinations having the sum of 8 we're going to add their corresponding probability measures so let's have this one so for example this a here represents the first set so we have 2 over 6 b it represents 3 over 5 or 3 and 5 I mean c represents 3, 4 and 4 d represents 5 and 3 and then e represents 6 over 2 or 6 and 2 so if you're going to add them and then if you're going to make f as the sum then we get 0 0.13 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 10, 10 to 9 so if you're going to round it off we could have um, 0 0.13.9 so that's it so this determines our last step actually so this kind of process is, is tedious especially when we are asked to identify a number of prob probability measures so for example you're asked to just to to find not just the pairs having the sum of eight but if you're asked to do to to to, to look for the sums or the pairs having the sums two three four five six seven eight nineteen eleven and twelve so what will you do so this is what we, we will do we are, we are going to compute or compute the probability measure for each of the items to do this let's have this code so we name um, this list okay then of course again it's 36 and then if you go into print it then we could find the probability measure for each sum so for two you have here 0 0.027 for 3 0 0.05555 for 4 0 0.833 0 0.08333 and so on and so forth so what we are looking for is 8 so let's try if let's see if the result is the same as the former that we had so we have 8 so 8 is the sum then this is the probability measure so as you could see 0 0.138888 something then is the same as this so after showing each step of the process now we're going to execute all of the steps as one code so if you're going to have all of them as one then this is the the result of course we still have the same outcome so why do we have to study this what is the concept or the connection to machine learning this is a very important concept in if base classifier which utilizes base rule so this uh, this algorithm is the operational idea in spam filtering so after all being said and done let's try to evaluate ourselves of how far we have learned so one what is an independent event? Two, how is the concept of independent event related to machine learning? And three, use Python to analyze independent events. So for your guidance, the link to the code is given below. So just try to play around it and have fun. So write your answers in the comment below. So do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell icon to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.